Hey guys, Wayback Rewind here. Today I want to talk about Canon's ZR960 Mini DV camcorder. This was Canon's last Mini DV camcorder, maybe the last one ever by any manufacturer. When it came out in January 2009, it was already obsolete. The question is, why did Canon come out with this camera at such a late date and put out an obsolete camera when everyone else had moved on to hard drive camcorders and mini DVDs? Who was this camera for? What was Canon trying to do with this camera? We're going to take a look at this next here on Wayback Rewind. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. This is Canon ZR960 Mini DV camcorder. It's standard definition. This was considered an entry level camera when it came out in 2009. It had a retail price of about $250 in $2009. It was very inexpensive. The thing is, what was the purpose of a Mini DV camcorder in 2009? Just to give you some context, this is what the competition looked like in 2009. You could get a full HD 1920 by 1080i HD recorder they could record to internal memory, to a DVD drive, or to a memory card. Panasonic had a camcorder they could record to a hard drive or to an SD card, which is still the state of the art right now for, for consumer camcorders in full HD. So compared to that, Canon was putting out a camcorder that recorded in standard definition on tape a mini DV is a great format. You know, in 1995 or so when mini DV came out, this was the first digital format for consumers where you could record digital video on the tape. This was a huge upgrade from SVHS or Hi8. And given the small size, camcorders could be made much smaller than they previously had been before. So this was a great thing. So by 2009, mini DV had peaked and was already on its way out. So who was Canon making this camera for in 2009? A standard definition camera on tape. Another way of saying the last one ever is to say this is the newest mini DV camera that you can buy today, as far as I know. That in itself is one of the reasons why this camera is popular. When this camera came out in 2009, there were a lot of people buying this as a replacement for their broken mini DV camera. They had a box full of tapes that they would have no way to play unless they had a working mini DV camera. So for $250, they could buy this camera and have a way to play back their tapes. That was the biggest group of people buying this camera. From reading the contemporary reports from 2009, the second group buying this camera were video students in high school and college. For $250, they would buy 10, 20, 50 of these cameras. And for students, this camera has a feature that was very helpful. By 2009, a lot of consumer camcorders, the mic jack had started to disappear. This camera has a mic jack on it. It has an AV port and get live video to a television. And it has a Firewire. Firewire was the greatest thing in the world when it came out in the 90s. By 2009, Firewire had started to disappear off laptops and desktop computers. To this day, I don't have a solution to add a Firewire port to a laptop. If you know of one, let me know in the comments. My solution is to go out and buy a 15 year old computer and somehow make it work. For a desktop, you can still buy Firewire cards and put in there. The consumers of 2009 had already started to complain that Firewire was obsolete. The reviews for this camera, people would say, well, it, had, it does not have USB, so that's a problem. But if you had the right equipment, Firewire gives you the ability to pull information off the tape without any loss, edit it on your computer, and then put it back on the tape, completely lossless. Firewire had some advantages over the DVD and the hard drive formats. MPEG was a new thing. When people were trying to edit MPEG and AVCHD, these caused problems with the software at the time. People were complaining that they wanted their old Firewire. And so for people that were old school, old school for 2009, they loved these cameras because they could edit them with the software that they were familiar with, with their older computers that still had the FireWire port. Today, it's going to be tricky to do this. I have a video on how to edit with FireWire using an old computer. I'll put a link in the description for that. But for now, if you want the newest mini DV camcorder made by Canon and maybe by anyone, this is the camera to get. This particular model is in perfect working condition. I'm going to hook a monitor to it so you can see better what it's doing.
So I just bought this camera. It's fully operational. It has very strange and interesting collection of features. Like I said before, it has an AV out, which allows you to connect it to an analog television. It has a firewire, which allows you to connect it to a computer that has a firewire port, if you can find one. And it has a mic jack, which had started to disappear off consumer camcorders of this era. It's almost more interesting to talk about what this camera does not have. It does not have a touch screen. It's hard to imagine in 2009 that Canon would make a camcorder without a touch screen, but it has the old joystick, which is kind of odd. It's not outputting the menu to the screen. There's probably an option to change that. Let's take a look real quick. Let's go to the playback menu. Maybe it'll be more obvious there. TV screen is set to off. Let me turn that to on. And that's exactly what I had hoped would happen. I now can see on the screen what's going on here. So make it a little bit easier for me to demonstrate the menus. So coming in here, everything is accessed to this little joystick, which is very strange for a camera recorder from 2009. But it has a lot. Notice there's very few buttons on here. There's almost none other than the eject, the zoom, and this easy button, which is kind of weird. And it has this rotary encoder. The interesting thing about this switch, this is a physical switch, which goes between play and camera. This camera has a feature that I've never seen on any other camera recorder. Let me show you what I'm talking about. One of the interesting things, I've never seen this on any other camcorder, even though that physical switch is in play, I can come in and select record off the menu. It goes into record. Now I assume this is only designed to work for recording off the line in, which is why it's showing no signal because I, have this connected to a monitor it's not a line in so it's not doing exactly what you would want it to do but the fact that i can select record mode from the software menu even though the hard switch is in play it's kind of unusual i've never seen that on any other camera i'm going to go to record mode so you can see those digital effects okay now it's going through all the digital effects there's a fade there's a wipe black and white sepia art it's kind of a it's kind of hard to see on this screen but it's kind of turning into an art freeze and then a mosaic I guess if you want to block out somebody's face you could use this this camera also has another feature which I've never seen on any other camcorder I've seen this on phones it has this LCD light and like okay what is LCD light what you do is you can turn this on and the entire screen goes white and you're expected to turn this around and use it as a light and then there's a button here where you turn this on and then the viewfinder turns on. So it has a color viewfinder and you're expected to turn this color viewfinder on when you're using the, the screen as a light. This is one of the few cameras I've seen that allows you to use the color viewfinder and the screen at the same time. You can do that at any point, but it was put there intentionally so that you could use the screen as a light. I've tested this. It's not very bright. It's not very helpful. But it's kind of interesting that they at least thought of that. I've seen some phones do this in selfie mode, but I've never seen this on a camcorder. You can look through here to see the menu on how to turn it off, but I just know from playing with it that you press it again and it turns off. That's kind of an odd feature. In order to save from putting a light on here, they, they kind of cheaped out and used the screen as a light. So one of the things that made this camera popular among video students is that even though this is an entry-level camera with very few buttons to do anything you can pretty much do everything through the menus so you have these program modes which I don't think a video student would want to do this but it has all these program modes but then you can come in here and change into manual mode and and do all the things you would normally expect to do with a camcorder so I can go into automatic white balance mode or I can set the white balance to daylight, tungsten, or manual. I can change the way the camera is processing the video. I can turn that off. I showed you the, the light and the video effects. What I really want to show you is the camera. Even though this is an entry level camera with very few buttons, I can come in here and I can get full control over the shutter. Now you see that one two thousandth high speed shutter. I saw in some of the contemporary reviews from 2009 that people liked this camera because they could evaluate their golf swing or 
other sporting events that they participate in. Having a high-speed shutter like this, it was a popular feature on some cameras over certain camcorder eras. But to be able to do this with an entry-level camera was pretty amazing. And people were appreciative of the fact that you could adjust the shutter. And it also had a slow-speed shutter. I could come in here and turn this on, and in low light, you would still be able to film. It had a 41x smart zoom, which gave it a little bit of zoom above the optical, but it had this ridiculous 2000 digital zoom. I'm not even going to demonstrate that because that's more of a gimmick. Zoom speed can go between variable, uh, making the switch, you know, pressure sensitive from slow all the way to fast, and then it has three fixed speeds. I don't know why you would want that, but the variable is what I would always use. Image stabilization and widescreen, as I talked about earlier. In an entry-level camera that cost $250 in 2009 was pretty cool. Windscreen settings for the mic, backlight, markers. I always liked having my markers on in a grid so you can do your rule of thirds. This really was a very functional camera to be a camera that was sold you know at entry level price at the time where it was mostly obsolete if you absolutely needed a mini dv camera to play your tapes this was a good camera to buy even if you're not shooting mini dv anymore you still need a way to play it back you still need a way to copy it off to your computer if you could find a firewire computer that worked this would be the one to use back then this is the one that you would use today being the last mini dv camera that canon made Maybe the last one that anyone made. Some of the reports that I've read, people said this was the only mini DV camera on the market when they bought it. So I think that there's a very good chance this is the last mini DV camera made by anyone. You want the newest one that exists anywhere. This is the camera to get. And there you have it. Canon's last mini DV camcorder. Maybe the last one ever made by anyone. Doesn't have a lot of functions. It's not as fancy as a hard drive camcorder or a mini DVD camcorder. It doesn't have a memory stick of any kind. It doesn't shoot stills at all. They did not include still capability of any kind on this camera, not even to the tape. So this is a very basic camera. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it does do the basics. If you want to transfer a mini DV tape to a computer, this camera will do it. And there you have what could be the last mini DV camcorder ever made by anyone. As always, like or subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.